Thanks for joining us. I'm Elaine Reyes in Washington, D.C. There is a new neighbor in our universe. Scientists from NASA are calling it a close cousin of Earth. Some of its features are similar to our planet, and it's raising the age-old question of whether life could exist elsewhere in our solar system. CCTV's John Zarella joins us live from Orlando, Florida, with more on this discovery. John. Hi, Elaine. You know, this really is big news, and it does get us a step closer to answering the question, are we alone in the universe, or is there something or somebody else, else out there? Now, the Kepler Space Telescope has discovered 4,700 planet candidates. Of those, 1,030 have now been confirmed as planets. But... The first one it found in 2011 was too hot for life. Others have been too cold for life. Others have been too big or too small. None of them have been just right. Some of them haven't been solid enough. But of all those planet candidates that have been discovered or found, only a dozen of those are in what's called the Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot, not too cold, just like where Earth sits and rotates around the sun. Now. Planet 452b, one of those dozen planet candidates in the Goldilocks zone, has been confirmed, in fact, as a planet orbiting a sun very much like Earth in that habitable zone. And what does that mean? It means that water could have pooled on the surface of that planet, and that means there's a possibility that life could exist on planet 452b if all the conditions were right. Here's NASA's Associate Administrator, John Grunsfeld. It makes me feel like there really is a solar system like our solar system out there. There really is another Earth out there. There's an Earth 2.0. Now, we're not going there anytime soon, Elaine. This planet is 1,400 light years away. That means traveling at 186,000 miles per second, it would still take us 1,400 years to get there. So not going there anytime soon. And it's important to note that Kepler is only looking at a very small fraction of the Milky Way galaxy. That's, of course, the galaxy that we're in. And, of course, it's estimated that there are about 100 billion, with a B, stars just in the Milky Way galaxy alone. So do the math. How many planets are out there. Oh. John, does Kepler actually see these planets? You know, that's an interesting point because no, it doesn't. People always say, well, where's the pictures of it? It does not. What Kepler does is it detects a dimming of the star's light when planets cross in front of it. That's called transiting. So as planets that it's looking at, as, as it's looking at different suns out there, as it's looking at those suns, if there's a dip in the light, then it can detect that a planet is in fact crossing it. And then through analysis and computer analysis back on Earth, they can determine the size of the planet, um, its, its mass, whether it's in the Goldilocks zone, whether it's a gas giant, all of that's determined back on Earth. But no, we do not have telescopes powerful enough yet to actually see worlds like 452b. But boy, when they get those telescopes, that's going to be some revealing images. Elaine? Exciting stuff. CCTV's John Zarella live for us in Orlando.